Hello YouTubes. Now, I know I said I was finished with this compressor restoration, but a couple of guys, these guys, left a comment to say that my compressor was spinning the wrong way. So I thought, well, I'll just rewire the motor. Motor wiring. Ugh. Before we get started in this video, make sure you unplug the device you're about to work on. Public service announcement. So you might be asking, well, if the compressor was working and it was filling the tank with air, then what, what does it matter if it's rotating that way or rotating that way? It's very important. Let me show you. As you can see on this big wheel, there is an arrow specifically pointing in that rotation so you're thinking well why does it matter if it spins it spins no on the back of that wheel it connects to presumably a crank and pistons which are oil fed the oil pump will only work one way so if i run that in reverse then nothing is getting lubricated and i'm going to destroy that compressor pretty quickly so rewiring there's a little menu on top of the motor and it gives you all the, the wiring diagrams for high voltage, counterclockwise and clockwise. It took me ages to work out what CCW and CW stands for. So that's counterclockwise and that's clockwise. High voltage will be running at 220 and low voltage will be running at 115. But as you can see, I've just got a bunch of wires. I was expecting a terminal block with all these numbers and lines and everything to be printed on nicely. So I did panic because I have actually 13 wires here, which doesn't make sense because you only need like two wires and a ground to run a motor like this. So on closer inspection, I noticed that every wire is marked. So that would be P1 in reference to P1. So I'll, I'll go into a wee bit more detail because this really did confuse me for a while. An important thing to note here is I want my compressor wheel to rotate counterclockwise. So you would think, well, I want the motor to rotate counterclockwise. No, that's not how this is designated. You don't actually look at it from this side. If I was to spin it that way, technically that is counterclockwise because the rotation of this wheel here is viewed from the back. You know what I mean? So if you were looking at the back of the machine out this way, you would be looking at it rotating that way. So that way would be counterclockwise and that way would be clockwise. So I've already checked all these wires and all their markings and this is set up to run high voltage uh, counterclockwise, but I need it to run clockwise. Remember what I was saying? So clockwise is actually reversed if you're looking at it from this angle. So I need it to run that way. So that belt will go along there, rotate around there, just like that arrow wants it to. So let me show you this little plate at the top and how to read that wiring diagram. I'll just zoom in from here so you know where we are talking about. This section here is the section that we are interested or I'm interested in because I'm running it at 220. Low voltage would be 115. So as I say, we're interested in this section here. On the left hand side, you can see line one. So that's one of the hot wires. On the right hand side, line two, that will be the other hot wire. So line one, I'm wanting it to run clockwise. As I say, I've already checked all the top ones and they are correct for it running counterclockwise. So if I want to change it, right. Line one, as I say, is one of the hot wires. I want to connect that with this little line. That means it's connected to P1. That's it. All that P1 does is connect to one of the hot wires. Okay, 
moving along, you need to find T6 and T7, hook them together. T2, T3, hook them together. P2 and, what's that? T5, hook them together. And T10 is blocked off, just capped, I'm guessing. And then the last one will be the, the second hot wire, line two, will be connecting to T4 and T9. Relatively simple. If you, when, you, when I first looked at this, I didn't have a clue what that was all about. And as I say, if you look at all these wires, that one's T6, that one, there is a marking somewhere on them. You might have to spin them over. Yeah, so that one is T7. This one, I think we've seen that one before, P1, which is connected to one of the hot wires. They are all labeled nicely. So, I need to take these caps off, wire them properly for clockwise, and then hopefully everything will be hunky-dory. Okay, I just need to double check all these wires and connections and then put these, I think they're capacitors, they sit in there, but I'm not going to do that because they sit in front of the wires. So as I say, I'll check the wires first, put these back on and I've got a cover to go on there and then we should be ready to switch it on and hopefully great success, we'll find out. Right, cover back on, moment of truth. I'm gonna plug that thing back on, hit the big scary on button. You guys can watch that rotate, hopefully the correct direction. You know what, I'll do it again, and this time I'll do it in slow motion for you. Fantastic. I have hopefully now saved it. In fact, you two, you two guys have probably just saved that compressor from drying up and getting destroyed after all my hard work. So thank you very much. Concluded, except for the bracket, the, the thing I was going to build at the front, but hey, I can use it. Talking of which, tons to do. I had a very special visitor around today and I'll explain who he was and what he brought for me yesterday, tomorrow, or the next day. You know what I'm talking about. But tons to get on with. Now I've got the job, the, the tools to do it. I've got the big compressor, I've got plasma cutters, I've got TIG welders. I've got no excuses. That's the only thing I don't have. So thank you very much. See you very soon, I promise. <laughs>